I guess this is just Michaela, you've probably done post on law already in physics. Um, the idea is this that we've been working with right triangles with the silver toe, sine cosine tangent and right triangles to find missing sides and missing angles. And then we branched off from that and said we can use sine law in any triangle, including right triangle if we wanted to. But sine law required you to have the right combination of sides and angles that are across from each other. If you don't have the right combination of sides and angles that are across from each other, and then we're stuck. There's nothing else that we can do besides derive, sorry, we could take a triangle, take a random triangle, cut it in such a way that we create right triangles, and from that, do a whole bunch of work to find all the missing sides and angles that we need. But that requires that extra step. Is it okay, Eric? Okay. Wish. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a random triangle. So, consider a triangle. represents any triangle, we're going to call it triangle C. We know that the side across from the angle, we're now going to label it as little a, little c, and little b. That's nothing new. So I'm going to talk about this. I'm not going to derive the formula. There's going to be one formula, which is called the cosine law, that we're going to talk about and we're going to show you. I'm not going to derive it. If you care about the derivation, the derivation where it comes from, I used to teach it. It's the second page of my notes. You're welcome to look at it on your own. But I'll derive it for maybe the three or four of you afterwards, um, for those of you that care. So we'll finish the lesson. I'll give up the homework. And if there, there should be about 10 minutes or so left in class. For those of you that care, I'll do the derivation nasty, but it should make sense. So I'm going to skip the derivation, but I'll talk about this. Imagine if this was a right triangle, and at C was your right angle. Don't draw this. So if the right angle was at C, and here's little a, sorry, little b, little a, and there's C, then we could say C squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, because it's the right angle. So if I had to go into the implies here. It's fair to say, though, that if C was less than 90 degrees, if I make C an acute angle, and I take that corner, and I shrink it a little bit, then it's fair to say that that hypotenuse becomes shorter. Clearly, it becomes shorter if I decrease this angle. That side is based off of that angle in these two sides. If it was a right triangle, we'd have C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. If that angle is acute, then I have to subtract a little bit off of that C to get the actual measurement. If the angle was obtuse, bigger than 90 degrees, I'd be stretching this out, and clearly C would end up being longer. So I have to add a little bit to C to make it longer. But fundamentally, if I take the Pythagorean theorem and modify a little bit, this is where cosine law comes from. We can find, or sorry, we can use, cosine law to find the side of a triangle given two sides and the angle in between. So here it is. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Look at that. It's the point here. There's the cosine law. If the angle was a 90 degree. If it was 90 degree, there's the cosine law. It's the exact same thing as the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> but clearly, it's not a 90 degree. 
because it could be anything. If it's smaller than 90 degree, then we'd be subtracting a little bit off of that. If it's bigger than 90 degree, then we're going to be adding a little bit off of that. So we have to take the Pythagorean theorem and we have to modify this. We have to either make it bigger or make it smaller. That extra little bit is negative 2AB cos C. Wow. So here is the cosine law. Again, for those of you that care about where exactly this comes from, I'll do the derivation after, after the lesson, after the homework. Wait, that's a separate one, right? This is all one formula. Oh. Put this closer if you want. All one formula. So it's the Pythagorean theorem with an add-on to it. And this add-on accounts, takes into account what happens when you end up with a 90 of an acute angle or an obtuse angle. We'll do an example in just a second. Avery? Is that a negative 2AB? That's a negative 2AB cos C, or a subtraction of 2AB cos C. Okay, before we do our example, let's just uh, take out our calculators and try this. All I care about is just focus on this cosine C part. Let's say our angle was an acute angle. Let's say it was 60. What's the cosine of 60? 0.5. That means you'd have negative 2 times A times B times 0.5. So you'd be subtracting whatever that number is, which makes sense. Because if that was 60, I'd make it smaller and I'd subtract it. What happens if that was 120? You get negative 0 0.5. Negative times that times that times the negative would give you a positive. Which means if this angle was 120, it was obtuse, you make it bigger because you're adding to that value. What happens if it's a 90? Not one. No change. Zero. Zero. You get zero, which means it eliminates all of this, and as soon as you have a 90, then it goes back to the Pythagorean theorem. So this is cosine law. We'll do an example of this now. You can't see from what he's writing. Thank you, Ms. Botros. Find the measure. The unknown size. <laughs> Let's say this is five, this is four, and uh, we'll make this thirty seven degrees. Uh, and sorry. We'll do it from scratch. The big thing to remember, just like all formulas that we've done this year, is don't get tied up in the actual letters. The fact that you've got A, B's, and C's over there, and yet in this question there are no A, B's, and C's, don't worry about the letters. Think about what the letters actually represent. So in your formula here, this is the side you're looking for, C. A and B are the sides that you have. A and B are the sides that you have. And C is the angle in between. I'm just going to make a little note of that. Here, this is the angle in between. And the A and the B, and I guess the A and the B here, are the known or the given two sides. The given two sides. So when you compare it to our question over here, you've got x, you've got 5, you've got 4, you have 37. What's acting like your little a, little b? What's acting like your little c? What's acting like your angle c? Based off of this question. Okay. Any ideas? Jesse? Um, well, when, so c would be x. Sorry, which c? Little c, big c. Little c would be x. Okay. And then a, little a and little b are irrelevant because they're just one can be that one and the other. Perfect. So you can interchange a and b. That's yeah. fine. But c has to be there. And then big c is 37. Big c is 37. So that's what we're working with. I'll do the first slide. Actually, we will go through this calculation with the first slide. c squared is going to equal 5 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 5 
times 4 times the cosine of 37. Since it is the first one that we're doing, I'll do the calculations here. Completing the square. We don't do the square. So C is really the X that we're looking for, so X squared. 5 squared is 25, plus 4 squared is 16, minus 2 times 5 times 4 times cosine 37. I'll just do this part. 2 times 5 times the 4 will give us negative 40, and then we still have the times cosine 37. If you want to put that in brackets, you can, depending on your calculator on how to do this. Most of you, I'm hoping, can just type this all in one line, depending on, again, on brackets and all that stuff. But again, I'm just doing the steps to make sure that we know what's happening here. We have 40 minus 40 cosine 37. Please don't cancel out those 40s. That's not a really a 40. It's a 40 times the cosine 37. So 25 plus 16 is a 40. That's still 40 cos, what is it? cos 37. Let me just calculate. So here's the single biggest mistake that people will make. 8.055. That's the biggest mistake people will make. Vanessa? I got 25 plus 16 is 41. Say it again? 25 plus 16 is 41. Oh, yeah. pardon me, sorry. <laughs> so that extra one was, so was paramount. Thanks, Vanessa. 9.055. 9. 9. 9. 9. Okay. So let's go back to what I was doing. Right. So that's the biggest mistake besides the other mistake I made. <laughs> that's the other biggest mistake that you might make. There. Eat the square root it. Yeah. The really, just don't forget the square root at the end. Don't square root that number. You know, it's yeah. so close to being a pretty number. You do not need to consider the negative version because we are talking about the measurement triangle. This goes back to the metric relation we talked about earlier. Ideally, I'll be honest, I'm hoping we can go from here to here directly. I don't need to see the middle steps. I showed it to make sure that we understood it, but I don't need to see that. Questions? Just before we do our, the next part, I want to make sure we're clear why we can't use Sokotoa here. There is no right triangle here. We can't use sine law either because we don't have the angle opposing the 5. We don't have the angle opposing the 4. And we don't have the side opposing the 37. So we just don't have the right combination of sides and angles that are across from each other. Now, don't get me wrong. You could create systems of equations to solve this using sine law, but I don't know why you would. So we have cosine law. If we take cosine law, and think about what cosine law, there's four variables at play here. There's the side we're looking for, the two sides that we know, and the angle in between them. So this version of the cosine law allows us to find a missing side. However, if you had this side already, and you had this side, and you had this side, which means you also have these two, then that means the only thing that you'd be left with to find is this angle. So if I take this, I could rearrange to find the angle measurement given three sides. Imagine what's going to happen here. Let's isolate for cosine c. I'll just work through this, and then I'll write it down. Let's pretend we're trying to get that by itself. To get that by itself, we bring the a squared to this side and subtract it. We bring the b squared to this side and subtract it. How would we get rid of the negative 2 times a times b? You multiply the other side by it? Divide. Divide. Since this is multiplying by this, you would divide this side by negative 2 and b. You do all that, you end up with the same rule, but isolated for an angle. We can use cosine law to find an unknown angle given three sides. And it looks like this cosine c equal to c squared minus a squared minus b squared, all divided by negative 2ab.
This by itself is a lot more powerful because oftentimes we don't know an angle measurement. In practicality, if we had a triangle in the physical world, you wouldn't go around with a protractor and start measuring angles everywhere. What you would know, Brian, please hold me. What you would know is you could physically measure every side of the triangle. You could physically take out a ruler or a measuring tape or whatever if you're into construction or engineering. You could physically measure uh, measurements on uh, distance or length, but it's harder to find the angle measurement. So in this case, if you have three sides, you can find an angle measurement. We'll do an example of this one. After this example, that'll be it. I'll hand up the homework, and then I'll do the enrichment for those of you that care. And if there's no one that cares, then I won't do the enrichment. So find the unknown angle. Triangle. Uh, my three sides seven five three. My theta is in that corner. And the formula is written st still written on the other board over there. Don't get bogged down again with the letters. Think about what, what the letters actually represent. Think about what little a, little b, little c represent. Think of what angle c represents. All right, you've got all that information. Okay, so based off of this triangle, what's acting like your little a, little b, little c, angle c? What's acting like all those letters? <coughs> you notice that your biggest side is your hypothetical hypotenuse. Okay, that's not the right way to think about it. Uh, I'll get back to what Avery said after we're done this example. Ready? It's uh, the opposite side from the angle you're trying to find. So yeah. You see. Perfect. So this would be little c right here. Supposing the angle that we're trying to look for. That's the really the better reason. Um, so this would be big C, and this is little a and little b, and again, they're interchangeable. You can flip off them all you want. So the formula's over there. I'll write the first step. Cosine C. I, could, I guess it's theta, so we just go right to the theta. Cosine theta is equal to 7 squared minus 3 squared minus 5 squared, all divided by negative 2 times 3 times 5. Okay. This formula is perhaps one that you, maybe you don't want to do in one step. Again, that just comes down to your proficiency with your own calculator. Personally, because we, there's a there's a three uh, variables that we're squaring on the top and then subtracting each one, and then we're doing a division by three variables again. Personally, I don't like doing this in one step. I calculate the top and the bottom and then do the division afterwards. But I'll leave that to you. I will do this in steps so you can see what's happening. 7 squared is 49, minus 3 squared is a 9, minus 5 squared is 25, all divided by the bottom. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 times 5 is negative 30. Do one more thing on the top. Cosine theta is equal to 49 minus 9 is 40, minus the 25 is 15. Yes. Over negative 30. That number right there is negative one half. Remember what we're doing though? We're trying to find the angle measurement. So we do the inverse of cosine to bring it to the other side. So we do the inverse cos to find our theta measurement, which is 120. That's a negative 0.5, it's one of those special ones. Okay. Right before we finish, there's two things I want to say, something, and then I'll go back to what Avery mentioned earlier. It's important to note that we just got an obtuse measurement. This is obtuse. And we look at our triangle, and it makes sense. That's obtuse. There's a huge difference between cosine law and sine law. When you use sine law to find an angle of measurement, your calculator will always give you the acute angle. It'll never give you the obtuse. It was up to us to figure that out. It was up to us to look at it and say, does it look acute, does it look obtuse? Cosine law will always give us the acute or the obtuse, depending on what we're looking for. Why? We talked about it earlier. How come cosine law will give you the obtuse, and yet sine law never did? Michael? 
Because in cosine law, you deal with ne negative and positive. Yeah. Is it sine law, you just have positive. Perfect. If you think back to the homework that we did, the first homework for our chapter, for our chapter on trigonometry, we did a chart. In the chart, we did sine for a whole bunch of numbers, we did cosine, we did tangent. Sine kept on going between 0 and 1, 0 and 1, 0 and 1. That's what it looked like to us. Cosine, we saw, went to the negatives. It went to the negatives when we got up to angles. So as soon as you have an obtuse angle, you can get the cosine, but it ends up being a negative. That's why it's okay. And cosine law will give you a few, so you don't have to think about this. The last thing is just what Avery mentioned earlier. I just want to make sure we're okay with this. Remy said that C and C are across from each other. That's why you're looking for it. Try not to think of C as being the longest side, because it doesn't have to be. If I redo the triangle like this, and this was 7, this was 3, and this was 6, and we're looking for this, this smallest side is still C, because that's the angle we're looking for. So C and angle C, the angles across from the side that you're looking for. If you're looking for this angle right there, what side becomes your C? The 7, right? So don't get bogged down with the letters A, B, and C. Worry about what the letters actually represent.